These days, it can seem like Hollywood's got so many sequels on the slate, it's practically impossible to keep track of them all. Never fear, though, here are a few of the upcoming sequels, prequels, and spin-offs that might have slipped under your radar. Many fans thought the day would never come, but it looks like Ridley Scott is finally making a sequel to the story of Maximus Decimus Meridius, nearly 20 years after the original Gladiator hit theaters. Of course, old Maximus is busy walking through wheat fields in heaven, so what's the sequel actually going to be about? According to producer Walter F. Parks, the film is going to begin about 20 to 30 years after the original ended. And according to The Hollywood Reporter, part two will focus on Lucius, the son of Maximus's old flame, Lucilla. While Spencer Treat Clark played Lucius in the first film, we don't know if he's going to reprise his role for Gladiator 2. What we do know is that Peter Craig is writing the screenplay, and he's a guy with some pretty impressive credits to his name, including The Town, both Mockingjay movies, and the upcoming Top Gun sequel. And with Scott himself behind the camera, you can be sure it'll be nothing if not entertaining. Based on the comic book series by Mark Miller and Dave Gibbons, the Kingsman films have followed the adventures of Gary Eggsy Unwin, a London street thug who joins an organization of gentlemen spies. Manners maketh man. Soon enough, he finds himself in a hyper-violent world of electric lassos and bulletproof umbrellas, and now director Matthew Vaughn wants to expand on the franchise's quirky and messed-up mythology by finding out how Kingsman came about in the first place. The King's Man will explain the origins of the well-dressed intelligence agency, going all the way back to the early 20th century. According to Collider, the story will focus on an Eggsy-style hero named Conrad, played by Harris Dickinson, who gets involved in World War I. While the exact plot details aren't entirely certain, the film boasts an impressive lineup of actors, including Rafe Fiennes, Gemma Archerton, Charles Dance, Reese Evans, Tom Hollander, and Jimon Honsu. Collider also reports that this movie will feel more like a period drama than a spy thriller, which might make for an interesting departure from the previous two Kingsman films. Whatever Matthew Vaughn has in store will become clear on Valentine's Day 2020. Ever wonder what happened to Django and Broomhilda after they blew Candyland at Kingdom Come and Django Unchained? Well, wonder no more, because it looks like the fastest gun in the South is riding back into theaters. According to Collider, Quentin Tarantino is working on a sequel to Django Unchained, and this time he's teaming up with one of the most legendary heroes in vigilante history. Based on a comic series co-written by Tarantino and Matt Wagner, the sequel will find Django forced to escape westwards after burning down Calvin Candy's plantation. And that's when he runs into a Spanish nobleman named Diego de la Vega, who you might know better as Zorro. That's right, Django is reportedly going to team up with the famous masked swordsman and together, these two are going to use bullets and blades to free the local indigenous people from some very nasty bad guys. That might sound like an incredible premise for a sequel, but it's not entirely certain just how involved Tarantino is going to be with the whole thing. He's ultimately in charge of the project, but the folks at Collider believe he'll be producing instead of directing. As for the screenplay, comedian Gerard Carmichael will be writing the script, but it's also uncertain whether Tarantino is co-writing with Carmichael or simply overseeing the screenplay's development. One of the most influential shows in TV history, The Sopranos, came to an end in 2007. Not with a bang, but with a fade to black. The gangster series earned massive acclaim throughout its run, set the stage for shows like Mad Men and Breaking Bad, and gave us one of television's most iconic characters, Tony Soprano. Now, over a decade later, the show's creator, David Chase, is bringing his mafia saga to the big screen with The Many Saints of Newark a movie that serves as a prequel to the Emmy-winning series. According to Deadline, the film will be set in the 1960s, during the deadly Newark riots, and will focus on Dickie Moltisanti, Tony Soprano's mentor, and Christopher Moltisanti's father. The film will also star the likes of Vera Farmiga, John Bernthal, Billy Magnuson, Corey Stoll, and Leslie Odom Jr. And, oh yeah, gangster legend Ray Liotta is also set to show up. The screenplay will be co-written by Chase, and acclaimed TV director Alan Taylor will be sitting in the director's chair. In addition to working on Thor, The Dark World, and Game of Thrones, Taylor also directed several episodes of The Sopranos, which should make him a natural fit for the prequel. 
Speaking with Deadline, Chase explained this new film will take place in an era when the mob was a bit more dapper than they are today. He said, It is going to depict when it was good. The mafia was very polished at that time. How they dressed and what they did. These weren't guys who wore tracksuits back then. But that's not all. A young Tony Soprano is also going to appear, played by none other than Michael Gandolfini, son of James. The Many Saints of Newark is set for release on September 25, 2020. While he'd already won plenty of attention with movies like Boy and Eagle vs. Shark, director Taika Waititi really broke into the cinematic consciousness with his supernatural mockumentary What We Do in the Shadows. Starring Waititi himself and fellow New Zealander Jemaine Clement, this improv-heavy comedy tells the story of three vampire roommates just trying to get by in the 21st century. The film wound up on multiple Best of the Year lists, and since then, Waititi has gone on to direct a certain little indie picture you might just have heard of, Thor Ragnarok. But despite his new role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Waititi is still eyeing a return to the world of the undead. In January 2016, Waititi told Crave Online that his Shadow sequel will focus on the werewolf pack led by actor Reese Darby. Go uh, square. Sorry, they, they yeah, we're, we're werewolves. Not sweet what wolves. are we? Werewolves, we're we're not sweet wolves. Oh, no, it's, it's listen a very to offensive, offensive word to call people. Bro. In June, the director explained the plot of Werewolves would focus on a power struggle between Darby's alpha male and Stu Rutherford's recently transformed computer programmer. However, YTT has explained that making We're Wolves is going to take a while. Speaking with IGN, the director said, The Jemaine and Taika works is a very long and slow machine. We put an idea in one end, and it takes about six years to come out the other end. And sometimes it doesn't even come out. In other words, We're Wolves is still currently creeping its way through the creative sausage maker. But if you need your shadows fixed sooner than later, you'd do well to check out the spin-off shows set in the same universe. Wellington Paranormal, and FX's What We Do in the Shadow series. Die Hard could well be the greatest action movie of the 80s. In fact, it's probably one of the best action flicks ever made, full stop. But let's be honest, the series has suffered in recent years with the last film bombing with critics and tanking at the domestic box office. So fingers crossed that Die Hard 6, aka McLean, can bring a bit of fun back to the franchise. According to Len Wiseman, who directed Live Free or Die Hard, the new film will jump back and forth in time, similar to The Godfather Part II. In one timeline, we'll have Bruce Willis squaring off against a team of dastardly terrorists. In another, there'll be a younger John McClane patrolling the streets of 1970s New York. As for the cast, there's no word yet on who will play the younger McClane, but Wiseman has promised the appearance of a young Holly Gennaro, who fans know grows up to become McClane's wife. However, there's been a snag in getting the film to the big screen. Die Hard was originally owned by 20th Century Fox, but now that Fox has been bought out by Disney, the folks at the House of Mouse have to give the movie the go-ahead. Luckily, according to McLean producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura, Disney does indeed like the script, so at the moment, it looks like Die Hard 6 is still in play. Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World is one of those movies everybody loves today, but nobody saw when it was in theaters. Starring Russell Crowe as a British sea captain and Paul Bettany as his scientific best bud, the film follows the adventures of the HMS Surprise during the Napoleonic Wars. Despite rave reviews, the movie's poor box office performance seemingly sank the chance of a sequel. However, in November 2017, Russell Crowe took to Twitter and posted this cryptic tweet. For the Aubrey Maturin lovers, I do hear whispers indeed that a second voyage is perhaps potentially pre-proposed a possibility. Admittedly, it's not a lot to go on, but if Crow is on board for such a massive undertaking, maybe we'll get to see the further adventures of Captain Jack Aubrey and Dr. Stephen Maturin before long. Of course, as Bettany pointed out in May 2018, Crow has a history of teasing the sequel in hopes of interesting the people with the pocketbooks, and there's still no telling whether there's enough studio interest to get this project going. But if it does, as Bettany put it, I would revisit those waters in a heartbeat. Based on the novel by Andre Asimov, Call Me By Your Name picked up several Oscar nods at the 90th Academy Awards and even won the prize for Best Adapted Screenplay, making James Ivory the oldest Oscar winner of all time. The movie made its way onto multiple Best of the Year lists, and inspired by its success, director Luca Guadagnino has decided he might return to helm a follow-up. 
At the BFI London Film Festival, the Italian filmmaker said that he wanted to do a sequel that takes place several years in the future. It would be set during an era where Timothy Chalamet's character Elio would be dealing with the impact of the Gulf War, the fall of the Soviet Union, and the rise of the AIDS epidemic. He also told The Hollywood Reporter that he wanted Elio to be a cinephile, and the sequel might open with our protagonist sitting in a theater watching Once More, the first French film to grapple with the subject of AIDS. Guadagnino is also considering an entire series of films that follow Elio and his lover Oliver as they grow older. Right now, this is all very theoretical, but Guadagnino is reportedly serious about pursuing a sequel. And Army Hammer has confirmed that both he and Chalamet would be up for returning. Andre Asimov wants to write another book. Luca wants to write the script. Uh, Timmy and I are down as long as they give us each $12 million. Death. However, not everyone will be returning if the film gets going, as the first film's now Oscar-winning screenwriter James Ivory has said he has no interest in working on a sequel. Andre Asimov, on the other hand, seems pretty gung-ho about the whole idea, as he's writing a sequel of his own. Will the potential movie take any inspiration from Asimov's new book, or will Guadagnino do his own thing? Right now, that remains a mystery. Do you feel the need? The need for… a sequel? If not, you'd better get yourself right back into the danger zone because Pete Maverick Mitchell is soaring back into theaters next year. Over 30 years after Top Gun turned Tom Cruise into a legitimate star, the A-list actor is finally returning for part two. And he's not the only original cast member making a comeback. According to the rap, Val Kilmer is set to return as Tom Iceman Kazansky. But don't expect Top Gun Maverick to be a clone of the first film. While nobody knows the plot for sure, Variety says that Cruz's character will be a flight instructor and that the movie will, quote, explore a world of drone technology, fifth-generation fighters, and the end of the era of dogfighting. And to represent this brand new world, Miles Teller is playing the son of Maverick's late and great wingman, Nick Goose Bradshaw, played in the original by Anthony Edwards. Jennifer Connelly, John Hamm, and Ed Harris will round out the cast. Joseph Kosinski, who previously worked with Cruise on Oblivion and broke onto the scene with Tron Legacy, is taking the director's chair. Expect Top Gun Maverick to take off on June 26, 2020. Widely considered one of the scariest movies ever made, The Shining certainly seems like a clean-cut standalone story. Jack Torrance dies, and Danny Torrance escapes the Overlook Hotel. What more needs to be said? But there was one person who disagreed with conventional wisdom and thought The Shining needed a sequel. Over 35 years after publishing the original novel, Stephen King returned to the psychic world of Danny Torrance with Dr. Sleep. Published in 2013, the plot follows a middle-aged Danny as he overcomes alcoholism and uses his shining abilities to help hospice patients find peace. But things get a little bit complicated after he befriends a young girl with incredible powers, as she's being hunted by a cult that wants to feed off her psychic energy. Following the success of IT, Warner Brothers is adapting Dr. Sleep for the big screen, and there are some impressive stars joining the cast. Ewan McGregor will play the older Danny Torrance, and Rebecca Ferguson of Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation, is co-starring as the villain known as Rose the Hat, while Westworld vet Zahn McClarnon is on board to play her lover and lieutenant, Crow Daddy. Newcomer Kylie Curran will play Abra Stone, the girl with a psychic gift, and we're also going to see the return of some classic Shining characters. Alex Esso of Starry Eyes will play Danny's mother, Wendy Torrance, and Carl Lumley will play the telepathic Dick Halloran. I think a lot of things happened right here in this particular hotel over the years. And not all of them was good. So how exactly will Dr. Sleep connect to the Stanley Kubrick original? While speaking with Bloody Disgusting, director Mike Flanagan said that while this movie isn't The Shining, his sequel will indeed acknowledge the 1980 horror classic. Dr. Sleep will be released November 8, 2019. Ready for some totally bodacious news? Bill S. Preston and Theodore Logan are reteaming for another timey-wimey adventure. Bill and Ted Face the Music takes place nearly 30 years after the duo's bogus journey and finds the two excellent rock stars stuck in a serious midlife crisis. After a visitor from the future shows up with a dire warning, Bill and Ted must travel through time and write a musical masterpiece that will save all of space-time. Along the way, the duo will be joined by their daughters, played by Bridget Lundy Payne, who'll play Ted's daughter, Billy, and Samara Weaving, who plays Bill's daughter, Thea. Rapper Kid Cudi is also going to show up, although we don't know who he's going to play, 
while William Sadler is reprising his role of death. Dean Pariseau of Galaxy Quest fame will direct, while original screenwriters Chris Matheson and Ed Solomon will pen the screenplay, and the legendary Steven Soderbergh will produce. Even though a whole lot of time has passed since the last film, screenwriter Ed Solomon told Collider that Part 3 will maintain the tone, the sweetness, the absurdity of the first two while being something unique. Prepare to witness Bill and Ted's bogus and incredible new adventure on August 21, 2020. In May 2015, The Hollywood Reporter announced that Sony was set to remake The Craft, the black magic cult classic from 1996. But as it turns out, that initial report wasn't 100% accurate. Instead, the filmmakers are taking the Jurassic World approach, setting the film in the same universe but 20 years after the first film, making it something of a quasi-sequel. Producer Douglas Wick told HitFix, There will be callbacks to the original movie, so you will see there is a connection between what happened in the days of the craft and how these new characters come across this magic many years later. Lee Janiak of Honeymoon, who also co-wrote the original draft of the screenplay, will direct. As for actresses, we don't know yet who's joining the high school coven, but Robin Tunney has expressed interest in returning for part two. Here's hoping the rest of the original cast will bring back some of the old magic by showing up in supporting roles. The trippy Jim Henson fantasy Labyrinth is beloved by a seriously die-hard cult following and David Bowie's performance as Jareth the Goblin King has gone down in Hollywood legend. So making a sequel to Henson's final film is bound to be a pretty intimidating task, but Fide Alvarez is up to the challenge. Luckily, since Alvarez is best known for directing Don't Breathe and the 2013 Evil Dead remake, he should have no problem recreating the eerie atmosphere of the original. At the moment, there aren't any plot details other than the film will be a direct continuation of the first movie many years later, according to Alvarez. But rest assured, Labyrinth fans, there won't be another actor filling in for Bowie. It's impossible for anyone to replace Ziggy Stardust, after all, so Jareth the Goblin King will simply not appear in the upcoming sequel. And sure, the idea of someone tampering with such a beloved movie is kind of frightening, but Alvarez is approaching this film as a true fan. As he explained to Deadline, Labyrinth is one of the seminal movies from my childhood that made me fall in love with filmmaking. At the moment, it certainly looks like we're in good hands, although fans probably shouldn't hold their breath for the sequel's arrival. Henson Company chairman Brian Henson told Forbes in 2018, We're still excited about the idea. We are working on something, but nothing that's close enough to say it's about to be in pre-production or anything like that. It's further than you think. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.